Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the story of the Titanic of the 21st century. In 2012, off the coast of Italy, the huge passenger ship Costa Concordia sunk. It had over 4,000 people on board. The captain was one of the first to flee, abandoning the passengers and crew to their fate. So the large cruise ship Costa Concordia was built in 2006 using cutting edge technology. It cost 450 million euro to build. Its size was quite impressive to say the least. It was as tall as a 20 story building and as long as three soccer fields. Now, during its maiden voyage, the champagne bottle didn't break the first time, which is usually considered bad luck. The ship's captain, Francesco Cittino, was from a family of sailors. The luxury liner had everything you'd need for relaxation and entertainment, including 1,500 rooms, five restaurants, four pools, a movie theater, a spa, a casino, a concert hall, boutiques, a fitness center, and much more. Costa Concordia could carry over 3,000 passengers and over 1,000 crew members. So the ship's first accident was in 2008 in the Italian city, Palermo. The Costa Concordia was pushed into a dock during mooring by high winds in the city, causing damage to the bow. The incident was caught on camera by a dock worker. No one was injured, but there were still some fairly large debts. The press couldn't confirm exactly who led the mooring. The ship set sail again after repairs. The captain's friends said he steers the ship like a Ferrari driver. But they also called him a professional who could take risks and step away from standard procedures just a little. So on January 13th, 2012, the Costa Concordia set off for a cruise of the Mediterranean Sea with stops at seven European cities. There were over 3,000 passengers on board from various countries and about 1,000 crew members. The ship set off from the Italian city Civita Vecchia. In the evening, the captain decided to go slightly off course to pass by the Isola de Giglio. Maybe he wanted to amaze his passengers, or maybe he wanted to blow his horn at someone on the coast, who knows. He had done this at least three times before. So he turned off the ship's emergency defense and took manual control. Then Francesco Schettino approached the coast too close and too fast. He recognized the threat and told the helmsman to turn starboard but the giant ship in those winds was too slow to turn and ran it into the rock. The port side hull received a gash 174 feet long and four compartments started quickly taking on water. Now, the ship could sail with two flooded compartments, but not four. In minutes, the engines turned off and the lights went out. The crew members calmed the passengers, saying the electricity generator had malfunctioned. The lights came back on quickly. However, Many other functions, including the wheel, were non-operational. The uncontrollable ship started moving because of the water, but the wind and currents turned it back towards the coast. The Costa Concordia approached Isola de Giclio and gradually started sinking on the underwater rock. The Coast Guard first heard about what happened from a passenger who was worried on a phone call and who said that the Costa Concordia was seriously tilting to one side. People gathered on the decks and put on life vests, just waiting for an explanation from the crew. The captain remained silent and didn't ask for help for a long time, probably trying to evaluate the scale of the damage. The command to evacuate was given only an hour after the crash when it was already clear the ship was sinking. Now, by that time, rescue ships and helicopters had already set off for the crash site. A panic began on board and people rushed for lifeboats, fighting everyone for themselves. Some even said the first to be rescued were crew members. Several passengers jumped overboard and swam to the coast 170 feet away from the sinking ship. Now, one of the first to leave the Costa Concordia was Captain Francesco Schettino. He later said in court, he swapped his uniform for civilian clothes, slipped, and accidentally fell into a boat. On the way to the coast, the head of the Coast Guard called Catino and firmly ordered him to return to the ship to organize the evacuation. The captain ignored 
that order. Now, the active rescue operations lasted about six hours. And during this time, over 4,000 people were saved from the sinking ship. Divers later came to search the sunken areas, risking their lives and knowing the ship could slip off the rock and completely sink. Luckily, the ship only moved a couple inches while they were working. Within a day, a young South Korean couple was saved who had been cut exiting, and a man was found on the second day with an injured leg, waiting for help in a half-sucking restaurant. Here's an interesting coincidence. So one of the passengers on the ship was a granddaughter of a woman on the Titanic. They both survived their wrecks. However, not everyone was lucky. 32 people died in the accident. Some of the people found were the ones who wanted to take those things. Looting divers stole watches, jewelry, paintings, and more. Some were caught with stolen goods. Search operations lasted about two weeks and led to some questions, like who was at fault and what should they do with a half-sunken ship? So in the end, six people were found at fault for the wreck, and five of them were given conditional sentences. The main guilty person was the 52-year-old captain, Francesco Scatino. According to witnesses, his actions led to the deaths of 32 people, the loss of a ship, and damage to the environment. The fact that he fled on a boat before the evacuation concluded only made it worse. In the end, Francesco Scatino was sentenced to 16 years in prison. Now, he didn't admit his guilt and blamed the helmsman for the mistake. He said he executed the commands too late or just got them confused completely. Now, during the investigation, there were some interesting details that came to light. So it turned out that at the time of the crash, Scatino had invited non-staff members to the bridge, including his secret lover, Dominica Samorta. The main reasons for the crash were disabling the safety course, the language barrier between the captain and helmsman, as well as extra people on the bridge. The Italian press made Francesco Scatino the most hated person in the country and called him, I think fittingly, Captain Coward. Now, immediately after the crash, boom guards were put up around the Costa Concordia to avoid a large oil spill. The fuel was quickly pumped out of the tanks and the ship was made ready to be raised. That project took over two years to complete. In 2014, with the help of steel ropes and special water tanks hanging on the sides, the liner was put upright, towed to port, and dismantled in 2017. This cost over 1 billion euro to do. The ship's company also paid 11,000 euro in compensation to the passengers. Some estimates say the total loss from the shipwreck was over three times the cost of the ship itself. However, losing the liner that was insured didn't really affect the cruise company Costa Crociere. It quickly recovered and started making profits again. Now, the real culprit of all this, the rock that damaged the ship's hull, was turned into a monument. It has a memorial plaque and is placed in the sea next to the wreck site. Isola de Giglio's residents took the wounded in and helped them and were awarded with medals from the government for their civilian services. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to comment with what you learned from this and does this make you ever want to go on a cruise ship again, yes or no? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you again next time.